ever wondered why certain individuals effortlessly command respect and admiration wherever they go? What if I told you that an ancient philosophy could be your secret weapon in becoming one of those people? Stick around, as today we explore something genuinely fascinating. I'll unveil seven practical practices inspired by Stoic philosophy to help you be more valued in both personal and professional realms. So, if you're ready to unlock these secrets and witness a transformation in how others perceive you, stay tuned. Before we delve into our discussion, I'd like to invite more people to join us. Please hit the like button and turn on notifications. Doing so informs YouTube that you appreciate what we're sharing. Let's embark on this journey together, ready to turn your challenges into victories. Practice number one, presence. Your presence should seem unique, akin to the old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder, but it's more than just folklore. The Stoics emphasized self-restraint and being selective about how and where you invest your time. By not always being at everyone's beck and call, you create a sense of mystery and value around yourself. Consider this, when something is rare, we tend to value it more. The same principle applies to your presence. If you're constantly available or always in the thick of things, people may take you for granted. However, by choosing your appearances and contributions thoughtfully, people begin to notice and appreciate your presence more. So, how do you strike this balance? It's not about playing hard to get or isolating yourself. It's about being intentional Perhaps it means not accepting every social invitation or occasionally allowing others to take the lead at work. Give yourself space to grow and let others recognize the value of your contributions. When you do engage, focus on quality over quantity. Your time and presence are precious. Treat them as such. Practice number two, avoid being constantly available. This practice closely aligns with the first one, but approaches it from a slightly different angle. The Stoics emphasized self-sufficiency and independence, advocating for the ability to stand on one's own feet without relying excessively on others. This doesn't imply isolation or becoming a lone wolf. Rather, it's about cultivating inner strength and not feeling obligated to constantly please everyone. When you're always available, whether for friends, family or colleagues, it subtly communicates that your time isn't valuable. Stoicism teaches us to respect and value our time, energy and presence. So how do you begin practicing this? Start by setting boundaries. It's okay to say no and to schedule me time. At work, establish specific hours for focused, uninterrupted work. With friends, prioritize events that truly matter to you. When it comes to family, strike a balance between time with them and time for yourself. Managing expectations is crucial. Communicate your availability clearly. It's not about disappearing, it's about being transparent with your time. Remember, your time is a gift, and by managing it wisely, you not only respect yourself, but also teach others to respect your time. Practice number three, perceive the world as mysterious. This practice may sound like a plot from a detective novel, but it's a fundamental concept in Stoicism. Stoics emphasized introspection, encouraging individuals to reflect on their thoughts and feelings. They believed in the power of keeping certain aspects of life private. Seneca once said, the most powerful is he who has himself in his own power. What does this mean for us today? It's about not revealing all your cards at once, especially in a world where social media encourages oversharing. There's value in maintaining some level of mystery. This doesn't imply being secretive or deceitful, but rather being selective about what you share. Cultivating this sense of mystery involves being discerning about what you disclose online and in conversations. It's acceptable to keep certain hobbies, achievements 
or thoughts to yourself. Selective sharing sparks intrigue and prompts others to want to learn more about you. Additionally, having a private world is crucial for personal peace and growth. Remember, mystery isn't about deception, it's about discretion. It's about possessing a rich inner world that you don't feel compelled to broadcast to everyone, a quality that in itself is incredibly intriguing. Practice number four, let others invest in you. This practice is a gem from the Stoic treasure chest. Stoicism isn't solely about self-sufficiency. It also emphasizes the power of reciprocal relationships. Stoics believed in a give-and-take approach to interactions, not just what you can do for others, but also allowing others to contribute to your life. There's a psychological principle at play here. People tend to value what they invest their time and effort in. It's akin to cherishing a piece of furniture you built from scratch more than something store-bought. The same principle applies to relationships. When you let others invest in you, whether through their time, effort or resources, they begin to value the relationship more. So how do you facilitate this? Create opportunities for others to contribute, seek advice, ask for help, or simply invite someone to share their story with you. Show that you value their input and recognize their meaningful contributions. This not only strengthens bonds, but also enriches your own experiences. As Marcus Aurelius eloquently stated, we are born to work together like feet, hands and eyes. This embodies the essence of reciprocal relationships. By allowing others to invest in us, we forge bonds that are both valuable and fulfilling, much like how every part of the body works together for a common purpose. Practice number five, put your needs first. Initially, this might seem selfish, but Stoicism teaches us the importance of self-care and personal well-being, not just for our own sake, but for the benefit of those around us. Seneca aptly stated, as is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is that matters. So why prioritize ourselves? Because when we're in a good place mentally and physically, we're more effective, present and positive in every aspect of life. Prioritizing ourselves isn't about neglecting others. It's about respecting ourselves enough to acknowledge that our needs matter too. So, how can you practically prioritize your needs? Firstly, recognize what your needs are, whether it's adequate sleep, time for exercise, or moments for self-reflection. Then, set boundaries. Learn to decline things that drain you and say yes to activities that fulfill you. Remember, it's acceptable to put yourself first sometimes. This doesn't make you selfish, it makes you self-aware. By caring for yourself, you not only enhance your own life, but also become better equipped to positively contribute to the lives of those around you. Take a cue from the Stoic playbook. Care for yourself, respect yourself, and observe how it transforms your interactions with the world. Practice number six, life's center. This might seem counterintuitive, especially for those who highly value relationships, but bear with me. Stoics were advocates of emotional independence, not coldness or distance, but finding strength and value within oneself first. Marcus Aurelius wisely said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. What he meant is that our emotional well-being shouldn't solely rely on others. When we tether our happiness entirely to someone else, be it a friend, partner, or colleague, we risk losing our sense of self. It's like putting all your emotional eggs in one basket, inviting disappointment and heartache. So. What's the stoic remedy? It's about striking a healthy emotional balance. Absolutely cherish your relationships, but also invest in yourself. Cultivate hobbies, set personal goals, and make time for self-reflection. This doesn't diminish your care for others. It strengthens it by building a solid emotional foundation. 
As a result, you become more resilient, centered, and ultimately more valued. Your relationships become choices, not necessities, which is a powerful position to be in. Remember, it's about finding that equilibrium, loving and caring for others while also loving and caring for yourself. That's the Stoic way. Practice number seven. Stop initiating every conversation. This might seem counterintuitive, especially in a world that often encourages us to be the first to speak up and always reach out. But let's consider what the Stoics had to say about this. They emphasized thoughtful communication, not just what you say, but also how and when you say it. Seneca wisely said, we should every night call ourselves to an account. What infirmity have I mastered today? What passions opposed? What temptation resisted? What virtue acquired? His words remind us to reflect not only on our actions, but also on our words and interactions with others. When you're always the one initiating conversations, it can subtly convey that you're more invested in the interaction than the other person. While showing interest is commendable, a constant stream of initiation can diminish the uniqueness and value of your attention. So how do you find that balance? Give others the space to come to you. Let your friends, family or colleagues initiate conversations sometimes. It's a way of letting them invest in your relationship. When you do speak, make your words count. Listen more than you talk. Show that you value not just the act of speaking, but also the act of listening and engaging thoughtfully. Conclusion. In the art of conversation, it's not just about the act itself, but the quality and depth of it. By prioritizing meaningful interaction, you not only respect your own time and presence, but also honor those you communicate with. Remember, in the art of conversation, silence and listening can be just as powerful as speaking. These practices, deeply rooted in Stoic philosophy, are not solely about being valued by others. They're about loving yourself and finding a balanced, fulfilling way of living. As you incorporate these principles into your life, recall the words of the great Stoic philosopher Seneca, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Don't hesitate to step back, reflect, and adjust your approach to life. With that, we conclude our journey through Stoic wisdom today. If you found these tips helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more insights. We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let us know which of these practices you're excited to try out, or if you have any Stoic wisdom of your own to share. Remember, we're all on this journey together, learning and growing one step at a time. Until next time, stay wise and keep exploring the depths of Stoic philosophy.